Welcome back to <laughs> Great God Almighty. Third episode. I can't believe I lasted this uh, long. We're still talking about uh, music, God, and camping, homesteading, um, boondocking, stuff like that. Oh, you could. Oh, wow, I'm a panic at the disco balls. A really cool thing happened to me last week. I guest sidekicked on uh, the Christopher Frank TV network. Uh, alongside of Christopher Frank himself. Uh, he's got a good thing going out there, a uh, really talented um, content creator, um, host, all of that. And I understand that he sings, so we're just going to have to have a throwdown. Okay, um, gum. Check. Pellets. Check. Powder. Just in case. Yes. Um, where's my chapstick? Hmm. Found it. Oh, whoa. It's not like technically the chapstick brand, uh, just like if you were to use a Kleenex, and it's not the actual Kleenex brand, but it's just a tissue, by the way. Tissue. Um, always have a tissue. Uh, but it's um, something I got at a store that's um, kind of like Whole Foods, but not. It's called Sprouts. Whatever. Anyway, it's uh, it. Mm, that's it. Okay, so I have a lumbar thing. I'm not fat. It just again, it spreads the. <laughs> so can you tell I'm like really self-conscious? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. I have to stop saying, okay, and uh, I just wish somebody would say, shut up and sing. Um, Okay, so we're just, (laughs) okay, so we're just going to just, I'm going to just jump right into it. Um, Camping. (sighs) Most important item when you're camping, uh, when I'm camping and will be when you're camping too. You're going to be looking for them, or she's going to be looking for them, whoever she is. You're not going to care, but she's going to care. This. We'll get to that. But first, it's about this. This wires and string. I wish I was camping. Um, Okay, don't get this color. You're going to wring your neck. You're going to be walking and ding. Don't get camo either. You have to get hot pink or red or something that stands out because in all of your campsite um, and your stuff over here and your stuff over there and the clothesline here and you see your tree and then this tree, it's going to get lost in the, you know, the, the view, um, the horizon because nobody puts it down here and nobody puts it way up there out of their reach. They put it right here, eye level, and that's where you're going to wring your neck. Or he's going to wring his neck because he's taller than you. Get, where, where is it? Hold on. I'm going to, I need gum for this. I need gum. I mean, it's only camping. Oh my God. I'm for sure going to do a segment of uh, this show called What's in the Bag? Because you're like, let's talk about what's in the bag. This is my camping This is one, this is a fraction, like, I'm still good. You need, you need dry bags. This is not a dry bag. It's just like a, you know, a warm set of sheets bag. You know, once you're, I'm big with the bags, like the, the practical bags, not the shopping bag. You just throw those away, but something that has like a zipper, you know, that you can put, some stuff in that if there's a sprinkle outside, because this goes in a bigger box, which goes in a bigger box, all plastic, by the way, you don't want to be camping with anything but plastic to keep your stuff dry. But anyway, back to the clothesline. I need more space. I need space. Um, so don't get the white one. Don't get camo. You can't even, look, you can't even see this. And if you're surrounded by leopards and stuff, you'll never see your clothes. But honestly, you cannot see this. You can see it only here, right? But if you're out there 
in the woods and everything is this color and all of that. So don't get this color either. Um, your cloak, your clothesline has to be something like this color. There is no color. There's no color like this out there. Um, yeah, actually the leaves. But anyway, this shows up really good on the trees. Get this color or this color, something like that. Um, by the way, this is a legit dry bag right here. It's a dry bag. Okay, what's a dry bag? A dry bag, in case you um, are going like whitewater rafting or just in case you're waiting even fishing um fly fishing something like that um you know you want to hold your keys you want to hold your phone you want to honestly i don't bring it bring any of that stuff because like but this is the dry bag and um it doesn't even have a zipper on it but what you do is um it's got like a a magnetic lip I'm lying. There's no magnet in there, but this doesn't really make sense. So got to say that. And you roll it, you roll it, you roll it, you roll it, you roll it. Okay. Get it at your um, camping store or whatnot. And then you, and then you can like hook it to your belt um, that you should have for your, your tools, not your carpentry tools, but tools that you need to go camping in case you, Camping is a just-in-case adventure. Camping with a Virgo is always a just-in-case. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you got your, um, this is your dry bag. It's one of the things that's in the bag. Um, you know those cooking shows where there's pots and pans everywhere? The chefs, they cook till kingdom come. They throw everything. Uh, somebody cleans up after them. So, um, Okay. What else is in the back? Matches. Girl, you need matches. You need a lot of them and you need to keep them dry. That's why you got this bag and you'll store this bag in with all of those other plastic bins that you stack up. You're camping for a long time. This isn't just for a weekend. Although I would probably bring all of this for a weekend too. Oh, what are these? All right. So you got different size matches. I need to save some of this stuff for a different episode, different, you know, because um, then I will have depleted, like gone through everything in the what's in the bag section of the show. And okay, there I went. Okay. Uh, field and stream. It says it's a whistle. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. Um, you need to be able to call for help. <laughs> and no data restrictions apply for the whistle. Um, you got a few different kind of... I got a lot of whistles in here. Oh, my God. I got a lot of whistles. Oh, well, I was giving these to different members in case we get broken up, guys. Oh, my God. This is so retarded. But anyway. Okay, so you got your metal whistle. Let's try it out. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah okay um and then you have your um plastic <laughs> whistle it's a little bit warmer of a tone um either way the point is um okay <laughs> the point is when you're out there um in bear country, um, or any other country outside of America, and there are predators, um, you need to be able to, uh, you know, ward them off a little bit. With a, this is not going to ward off um, or send away a grizzly bear, but it's going to announce your presence. So you walk along. You never ever. If you like to just chill and be alone in nature and stuff like that, it's fine up until the Continental Divide, and then you need people around you. And if you don't have people, then you have to talk to yourself. Um, and if you're not in the mood to talk, well, just 
just blow your whistle, and it alerts the um, animal kingdom that, uh, you know, oh, something is uh, different here. Um, we might want to stay away. Um, I mean, you know, you got your bear bell. It's different from a barbell. Oh, what's that? Okay, this is another thing that it's not for holiday. It can be used for the holiday, but it has a hook and you can just hook it to your belt. And as you're walking, you know, now some people get carried away and out in the middle of like nowhere, Idaho, Montana, you find, you know, these freaks wearing these, like you got 10 here, 10 here, 10 on her foot, 10, Ooh, she look, you know, purple hair. That's not what we're getting at here. This is just like one and done. Okay. Um, electrical tape. Actually, I mean, yeah, there are hookups out there where you have your, um, you pull in your mobile home or your RV or something like that. Um, and, um, they have, you know, uh, electrical hookups and stuff like that. But if you have a fancy rig anyway, you're not going to need this kind of tape for that, um, sort of thing. But if you have like a tent or something, something, you know, primitive, then, you're going to carry, uh, because, you know, those rigs, they have like canisters that, canisters that hold, clearly I'm not used to this, canisters that hold the, um, and piping that holds the entire, uh, T of all of their wiring and their stuff like that. Um, but if you're tenting, you're, um, you're kind of unplugged, bare bones in it. And, um, so electrical tape, does um come in handy to um to protect from you know water it's all about water you do need water but water is can be your like biggest enemy out there also you need to stay dry what's in here about, oh yeah i'm not that's for another time um I'll do like maybe one more thing because like I said, I do have several of these um, what's in the bag bags, um, but um, I don't want to go through like, ah, look what I just, oh, wow, man, I've been looking for the, I'll keep it in the bag. Actually, a rule is whatever's in the bag stays in the bag because you're going to remember, ah, it's in the bag. And if you remove it from the bag and then you go looking for it, so, so do yourself a favor and don't move things. Don't move the cheese. <clears throat> I'm saving this. Keep that for myself. Although, okay, um, these are excellent bungee cords. They come in handy. If they're on sale at your nearest whatever, grab a few because you're going to, you know, think, ah, you're going to remember this can be used for something. Um great for tying down stuff and, uh, and, um, fastening and things that you don't want to blow away. Um, I want to share everything with you guys. Um, okay. This is in the wrong bag. This needs to go into the, um, be like those girls with the, how do they do that? Ah, get ready with me. Um, needs to be in the, um, the first aid bag, not the first aid kit, but the first aid bag. Like you need a huge bag. Um, well, I do. Anyway, always, you have to have some of these with you. And it's like full. I never even really used it, but it's good to have. Okay. For me, how many, are you keeping track of how many times I say, okay, dang. Um, these are little small wattage light bulb replacements. Um, not LED, you know, or automatic whatever's. I like, I'm old school. I like to be able to flip things on and flip things off. So when you arrive at your, sometimes you're in a cabin, sometimes you're in a place that's really um, rustic, bare bones, primitive, whatever, but you know, they got a couple of outlets. I'm prepared. I do have my, um, 
I need extras of these. You need extras of these. Um, where's my switch? I'll show you. I'll get to it. But these are good to have. Just saying. They throw a lot of light when it's pitch black out there. And you talk about your phone, but like who wants to have your... Why do you want to have your phone on? Okay, in an emergency, you want the light of your phone. And then to say goodnight, you know, to your stalkers. But other than that, you don't want to have your phone. You want to have, um, you know, old school stuff like your uh, flashlight, a torch, <laughs> um, and maybe one of these. Um, I'll find the switch. I don't want to go through everything in my bag. Um, this actually comes in handy. You need aluminum uh, foil. Um, I forgot why I needed this. I lit a candle. That's what it was. A little candle. Ah, I'm going through the bag. Look it. You need zip ties. You need them. You need zip ties. You're going to want to zip tie something. You don't know it yet, but these are all the aha things that you're going to need. So I don't know what gauge this is, um, but you're going to need them. You'll thank me. You'll write, oh, I got my zip tie. What else is in here? I'm going to go through everything. That's it. I'm not telling you any more secrets. Um, I need a goose. Boom. Guys. I hate that too, guys. It's like I don't even know any of you calling you guys. Um, I guess I have, now I have to clean this up. But anyway, first, things first. Clothesline. So when you pull in, let's say you... Um, you're going to need your own show. Um, you pull in to the campground, the campsite, whatever it is, and... Um, the first thing that I do anyway is I look at the trees and their layout. Who's strong? Who's going to tip over? Who's going to get in my way? When my, my car parking, stuff like that. I look for the trees that are in my way. Um, there are people that um, haul chainsaws, very small chainsaws with them because that's how they get their firewood. Um, but if a tree is in my way, I just look for a different configuration anyway. There's always two trees that are perfect for your clothesline. And you can like wrap it around the whole trunk, but what if it's huge, you know? So, uh, all right, I'll do a what's in the bag um, for a different series. I'm not going to get my tool bag, but oh my gosh, do I have an amazing tool bag. And in that tool bag is a hammer. You're going to want to have a hammer on your camping trip. Maybe you go glamping. I just learned actually what that was. I, I didn't think it made sense. Like glamping, don't you mean camping? I don't know. Then I found out. Um, I don't really love it. Although as you get older, you really appreciate. Um, yeah. Anyway, so um, you, um, you figure out your tree situation. What two trees are going to um, be the best for your clothesline? And you don't wrap it around the trunk because, again, what if it's huge? You're going to be using your entire um, yardage of string to um, or twine just to wrap it around the trunk. So you take your hammer. Always bring tacks and nails with you of different sizes. <laughs> and um, you hammer it in. Trees are rugged like that. You hammer it in. You make a little loop like that, and then you hook it on and, you know. It's... God, everybody's getting lost in the leopard. Now I know why they do this, but they do it for lashes. <laughs> and then you, like, you tighten it, okay? Right, and then you go to your, um, your, your next tree. Um, way down yonder, and... I mean, I suppose you could wrap it around the trunk if you wanted to, but again, you just make your slip knot and then hook it on to that um, nail that you hammered 
and you got yourself a clothesline. It's the first thing I set up. I don't know. Maybe guys set up other things first, but I set, set up the clothesline first. And then that way you can, the thing is you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want people to join you at your campsite and hang at night with the fire and everyone's having a drink and somebody gets up to oh, take a look and you know, boing. So what you do first is it's not like you, you, you got to hang out your towels or your shirts. Yes, that too. But the first thing you do is you hang up this or something of this kind of color, right? So there is no mistaking where the string is. It's like several yards, but you got this thing hanging. And people can, and even if they don't see the string, they're going to see that thing. It gives everybody a lay of the land so you don't hurt yourself. Because camping at night, you could hurt yourself. You know, I'm all about safety. Um, so um, what else? Uh, I had a list of things. I do bet better without the music because when I hear the music playing, oh, I'm not going to talk about the show on the show. Um, I, I'm into the music and I'm like, eh, I don't know how to speak English. Uh, okay. So, okay. Um, so getting to these campsites, getting to these, getting to these, um, <laughs> finding these campsites and stuff. There's an app. There are many apps, but one way you can do it is, well, you can go to the National Park um, Service website. Um, and not to be confused with state parks, by the way, but these are national parks and you can actually, I'm a card carrying member of the National Park and I can, it's really not within my reach, my card, um, but it's a little card, you know, just like a credit card. And, um, and there are some perks. Um, but anyway, um, you can start there and secure um, your sites. Um, I mean, some of these places, like a year in advance. I got to take this off. Um, some of these places a year in advance, you would um, you would secure, you know, a reserve, a site. But anyway, so that's the National Park um, Service. Um mm, and then there are state parks within, um, within that. Um, but there are things, um, like I was saying, apps called, uh, for example, free roam. It's one word. It's called free roam or free roam. And it's an app that maps out the entire United States in real time, uh, places to, um, to, you know, sleep for the night, camp for the night, um, outdoors that are free. Okay. So that means you're driving on the interstate out West and, uh, you got two hours till sunset and you know, you don't have like a hitch or a rig with you where you can just pull over anywhere and like have shelter for the night. You, um, you, look on the app free roam uh which i i i think it, it is defunct now and it, and there's other things like it but anyway we'll use free roam you look on the app and it says there are 14 spaces down by this river down by that river and when you get out west everything is gorgeous everything's beautiful you don't have to worry it's not like you're in you know Jersey or New York and there's like seven places down by the river <laughs> by the <laughs> like they don't anyway so um yeah you do that and um and you pull in and you see if it's accurate or whatever and it gives you a whole list of an amenities so that you don't have to go there for first and be disappointed so you're driving on the road you pull over you go to the rest stop or whatever and you look on your free roam app and green lights up dots everywhere in, you know, the state of like Ohio or Minnesota or wherever, um, north, south, east, and west, and you pick your zone and, um, and it says, you know, uh, there are outhouses, 
there are showers, there's hot water, there's only cold water, it's not running, you have to fetch it, uh, stuff like that. Um, you have to haul in your water or haul out your water. Um, or you can, there's a dump station or there's not a dump station. Um, no fires allowed or yes, fires, uh, but no firewood. You got to bring your own, but don't bring it from out of state. Um, or you can chop here or, you know, uh, buzz, whatever, um, here. Um, and it gives all kinds of characteristics. Uh, there is a ranger, there's not a ranger. Um, but the point is it's free first come first serve. So you drive up and you see that there's a cluster of cars sort of over there, whatever. And everybody, it's like, uh, there's unwritten ethical rules, um, courtesy rules that everybody follows. It's not like you're going to park right, right on top of somebody. You'll go like a, a little bit, you know, a little bit away. I go within screaming distance. That's my rule. Um, but you can go like even further away. Um, anyway, so, um, okay. I think that that could be enough about that. Although I, I don't think I, um, sort of gave you any closure. Not that you asked, asked. Um, but, um, so that's free roam. Um, every state has, uh, it's free boondocking areas. They call it boondocking cause you're out in the boondocks and, um, and you can set up your tent there. Um, and it's, it, it's free. A lot of these places are 50 bucks a night, a hundred bucks a night. And of course the gas that you spend to get, uh, 10 miles to the gallon with your $500,000 rig, uh, you know, is a consideration. I, I think I'm, I'm not sure about that, but anyway, so when you're as bare bones as you can be, but you have, you know, your shelter, your tent, or maybe it's going to be a lean to because maybe your tent accidentally got whatever. And it's, um, you know, ripped or bumped or whatever, or your, one of your bones, one of your spines that holds it up is crushed. Or, you know, the guy who, uh, didn't bring his headlamp to go to the bathroom, stumbled over it and stepped on it. And now it's, you know, you can't put up your tent or whatever. And the next, um, Dick sporting goods store is like, or patch kit is like a hundred miles down the road or whatever. You're gonna need, where was I going with that? I forget where I was going. Um, cause I anyway, on a much more serious note, um, Did you ever consider that where you are in life and your friends and loved ones is exactly where you're supposed to be, exactly where you're meant to be? Crazy as it may seem to some and maybe not to others, um, it's true. So whatever hardships you might be uh, suffering just for the day, you know, or maybe it's been going on weeks or, um, or, you know, whatever high places you've been riding in, um, you have to know and believe, not just know it intellectually, but believe and take it to heart that it's exactly where you're meant to be and what you're to be doing, what you're to be going through. Um, sometimes we don't realize that, um, bad things happen to protect us from worse things down the road. And sometimes we don't, um, consider that hitting the lottery or what, you know, in a manner of speaking or wonderful things that are happening to us are, um, maybe things that we don't deserve, but are being given to us as a sign of encouragement, or maybe we totally have, you know, earned it and deserve it. It, it gets, you know, it gets convoluted, but the point is wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever's happening for better or for worse is exactly what the Lord has meant for you to be going through right now. 
you can let it fly over your head and not give it a second thought. You could appreciate, you could be angry, you can wonder, all of these things. Um, that's how our Creator talks to us. That's how He communicates with us. These things that He puts in our lap. Um, and um, sometimes the... Um, the arrival, you know, of this situation or thing, uh, circumstance that, um, he has put in our lap, uh, was bumpy or maybe it was smooth. Maybe the package packaging that it's in, uh, is, is ripped and tattered and torn, or maybe it's beautiful. And, you know, all of these are signs and, and wonders of his, uh, and, it's exactly right on time for you and for me. Um, so I did uh, find for you the, uh, oh, look at that, Lost in Leopard. You have no idea what's going on in this, this camera mess. Um, it's my mom's. It's an old-fashioned um, light flicker switch thing plug. Oh, my. That goes with those um, low-wattage... Um, little bulbs for camping. It throws a lot of light. Okay. I have one of these. I do everything analog that I can because the more dependent and reliant upon this newfangled, you know, oh, it doesn't need anything. Just hook it up to your phone, hook it up to your house, to Google. You just hook it up to your record. It means trouble. The more stuff that I can do on my own, um, or that you can do on your own, uh, the better off. Uh, like that hammer I was talking about um, for hanging up the clothesline. Do you carry one in your glove? Because once those doors are locked, like those cars, those electric cars, they have a little chip, little teeny chip, and boom, the whole car just, the motherboard just instructs the entire car what to do. You want your AC, you want your window, the, the light. The, and once an EMP takes that out, you're, you're trapped in your car with the ro windows rolled up. Like those cars are not rolling down for you. Um, once the engine's off, if those cars... So when I drive over a bridge, I always roll the windows down, don't you? 
Don't you need a clean escape? <laughs> anyway, you need to be able to smash those windows. Yeah, yeah.